This week's parasha, Parashat Mitzvah, begins with the purification process of the leper. After the priest sees that physically he has been healed, now he has to be healed spiritually. And the spiritual healing process involves four different objects. He has to take two live, pure birds, and he has to take a piece of cedar wood, he has to take scarlet, a ribbon of scarlet, which is produced from a tolat, from a worm. And he has to take a hyssop, a zov. What is the secret and the illusion of these four different uh, elements and ingredients in his spiritual purification process? So Rashi and the sages teach us that the birds are taken because one of the major reasons of, of becoming uh, ill in leprosy and sarat is because of speaking the shonara, speaking evil things about other people, other Jews. And since birds are always chirping and talking, so that represents or symbolizes talk. So the birds has to be taken in order to atone for evil talk. Why two birds? Because sometimes talk can be good. So actually one bird is slaughtered and the other bird is sent off alive to the field. The bird that is slaughtered, it says, is the atonement for the evil words. The bird that remains alive and is set off is that we're not coming to nullify speech. We just want to make sure that all of your speech is devoted for Torah and Filah and for good words, sympathetic words that help other people. That's what speech is for. So that's why there are two birds. What about the, the next ingredient, which is the, the piece of cedar wood? Cedar is the most mighty and, and giant tree, and it represents uh, arrogance in the soul. So arrogance has to be atoned for. It's also called gasut ruach, crudeness of spirit. And this is also a major reason, if not even maybe more a reason for disease, even than the bad talk, because the bad talk itself comes from some inner arrogance of the soul. So that symbolizes the upliftedness, the highness of the, of the spirit. The, some of the commentaries ask the question, why do we take something, both the, the one bird that represents the bad talk and also the cedar wood which represents the bad feeling of arrogance, why do we take the bad things in the, as ingredients for the purification process? That we'll relate to in a moment. The last two things of the four are explicitly remedies. Because, as we said, the skull that is taken from a worm is called shnitola. Tola is, is a worm. That's the word that appears in the Torah. And a worm represents lowliness, just like King David said of himself, I am a worm and not a man. So and in another verse, King David says about himself, that I am very lowly in my own eyes. So that feeling of a worm is a state of existential lowliness of the soul, which is a very, very positive and necessary foundation of our ability to be truly altruistic to other people and to serve God with, uh, with a joy. The last thing is the hyssop. The hyssop is the exact opposite of the cedar tree. The cedar tree is the highest tree. The hyssop is a very small plant. So the, we're taught that if a person was high and uplifted and arrogant like a cedar tree, he has to lower himself like a worm and a hyssop, an azov. Why, why have the, uh, the cedar tree as part of the remedy? So one of the commentaries says that in order to be lowly in my own eyes, like King David, I have to remember and always have it's, it's some, in some part of my consciousness the awareness that in essence I have ego and I have a super ego 
and I have a, an exaggerated ego. And, I, and it came to the fore in my previous lifestyle. But now I'm making every possible effort to lower it, to lower myself. And because I had this, this over-exaggerated ego expression, that actually was the cause of my disease. But now I have to make myself like a worm and a hyssop in order to overcome that. But I have to re retain that in my consciousness. That's one interpretation why the cedar wood is part of the ingredients of the purification. Another commentary says that after I succeed in lowering my ego, sometimes I can go back and use the ego itself for the sake of good. That in Hasidut is called ithapcha, to turn over, to transform totally the ego into a source of good, because sometimes there is what's called anabab sula, which is, which is impure and negative lowliness or, or apparent humility but it's not good at all. If a person says that I'm not good enough to go out and, and make a, 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 to create a campaign to help another person, to help a community, it's too, too big for me. That's called anavapsula. It's called bad humility. A person sometimes, if a person has a positive ego, he has to be able to say to himself that I'm going to make, take the initiative and make a tremendous effort, and Hashem, of course, will help me if I take the initiative. But I have to take the initiative, and that's using his ego that I can do it, using his ego positively. So that's another very important interpretation, that the, the etz eres, the cedar tree, has to remain even afterwards, it's not just there to remind you of where you were in the past, but it's also someplace, it's, it's alluding to something in front of you, in your fore, where you have to go. You have to reach to really be great in Kedusha, in holiness, and be able to do great things. So actually there are three stages here which correspond to the, to the uh, paradigm of the Baal Shem Tov, which is called submission, separation, and sweetening. The submission is simply recognizing that I have to lower myself. I have to lower my ego. The separation is alluded to in that interpretation that even though I lower my ego, I have to keep my ego in mind because my ego is actually responsible for my, my being able to come to shiflut, to true lowliness. Sometimes it says that the bad helps and supports the good. The expression in the words of the Baal Shem Tov is hara ki tov, that evil is the throne of good. Because in always comparing myself to what, where I was and where I'm going to and where I am, Be'ezrat Hashem, in a certain way, I, I already begin to elevate the evil. So there's something about the presence of the eight eras of the cedar tree, which represents arrogance, and gasuta ruach in the remedy, that it was responsible for my ability to come now to shiflut, meaning that I had to be sick in order to be well. So there's something about the sickness that may be well, may be better than I was before. But then the ultimate sweetening, which is called the ultimate ithapcha, turning over and and turning it into good, is that, the ev that what was previously evil, which is the arrogance, it now becomes totally, 100% a mode of a force of working and enacting good in the world, which once more means that being able to take great initiative to do great things. And the greatest initiative is that we can bring redemption to the world, and we can bring Mashiach to the world, and we can bring healing to the world. And this is the healing process which is described at the beginning of Parashat Mitzvah.